So after we started EV for You custom conversions back in 2008, we decided we needed a marketing vehicle. And we chose the VW Beetle because a few cars have the nostalgic sex appeal that the uh, Volkswagen, you know, the classic VW Beetle has. And uh, it went over quite well and uh, was well received. And it was kind of ugly to begin with. So after a year on the show circuit as kind of a Frankenstein looking thing, three different colors, we decided to uh, invest a little bit and give it a nice paint job, clean up the interior. So this is our original marketing vehicle. It was later replaced with uh, the same year Carmen Ghia. This is a 1974 Volkswagen Beetle. It's a standard Beetle, not a Super Beetle. And so the Carmen Ghia became a daily driver and the vehicle that uh, we used for seven years. From 2008 to 2012, um, Bob, as we call him, which is a battery operated bug. This was our, our marketing vehicle. And then Carmen came on the scene and was used uh, for seven years, a little over seven years. We just recently sold her and we removed the uh, conversion components from the Carmen Ghia and we've now put them in the bug. The bug was done back in the day when we had, uh, you know, originally lead acid batteries and uh, a DC conversion. The batteries were upgraded many years ago to lithium, and uh, but it was still a DC conversion until now. And so we've upgraded it using the components that we removed from the Carmen Ghia and installed into the bug. And we'll show you that. And uh, as always, he runs like a million dollars. It's a hoot to drive around. And of course, gets a lot of attention because it's just a pretty good looking bug. <laughs> Being charged right now after his last little road trip. Uh, goes up and down the interstate. A little over 40 mile round trip, just like the Carmen Ghia did every day. So people have asked me why I use terminal strips, and this is a perfect example of why. In the project of uh, updating our beetle here, we're going to remove the DC to DC components, and so they're on this component board and everything is mounted on the component board and you know not a whole lot here you've got your main contactor your throttle shunt pop box relay and the controller and you got the two cables that go down to the motor that have been disconnected we have um, the um, negative and positive coming from the battery pack that have been disconnected one went to the motor and the other went to the uh, contactor here and uh, not the motor to the controller and the other one went to the contactor and then all the other wiring that comes from the vehicle to our component board came through this terminal strip so we know what everything is right there and we're going to reuse all of that 
And this just disconnected right here, this loom. We undid that. Now there's six bolts that hold this component plate to the standoffs uh, that are bolted to the firewall. Uh, we undid the throttle. And now six bolts and this is gonna come out. I mean, you really can't get that much easier. And then we'll put the uh, AC set up that component board will go right in this one's place. And in place of this Impulse 9 controller, I mean uh, motor, will go the um, AC51 that we're putting in here. So that's why. I like the modular aspect of things that allow serviceability upgrades or whatever that are very simple. After being a shade tree mechanic for almost 50 years, you, you get to the point where you know you, you grumble about the way things were designed and made and without serviceability in mind, when you design and make your own project, definitely have that in mind. And so all of our stuff is very modular in nature. So here's um, this thing just ready to get uh, to come out. I've already loosened all the, the bolts. So it's just going to be a matter of taking them out. There goes a washer. Um, and I've got a, a, a pad down here so that nothing gets scratched. But uh, yeah, I'm going to have to use uh, both hands and so forth be careful around this paint so uh, we'll cut back later so here's the old component board uh, that's been removed you saw it in the vehicle here's our connections to our terminal strip the main contactor the shunt the pop box relay the Curtis um, 1231 uh, C controller dash 8601 the pot box and this is what's going to replace it this is the Curtis 1239 and uh, we've got our our uh, throttle and contactor shunt this is our pre-charge relay our pre-charge resistors on the back side of the board and again our terminal strip so the component board as before is all pre-wired and then wires will go from here to the vehicle so that can be easily removed in the future um, for whatever reason I like to keep them modular and simple so basically to remove this you would just remove those eight connections right there your throttle, unplug your uh, wiring loom, your cooling lines, and of course there would be one line uh, from the battery pack from your main disconnect switch and uh, coming to the main contactor and then this goes to the most negative point in your battery pack. So that's, uh, that's it. Let's take a look at the car end. Well, here's the bug ready to receive the component board. We've got our AC51 installed. We've got our coolant reservoir. We have the original terminal strip that was here. And because the AC system uses a few more wires, we've added an additional terminal strip. And we had two, or I should say one left over. And, uh, and so we've got it already wired. So then this is the positive that will go to the main contactor and this is the negative that will go to the shunt. Different size uh, um, you know fitting so we're changing the lugs so we'll cut this one off also. We're just leaving it right now. But um, so the wires loomed and, uh, and then taped just to hold it next to the firewall the component board is on standoffs 
just as our plates are stood off too but this is stood off even further so there's plenty of room for all the wiring and hardware that goes on the back side so that's what's next the component board uh, you know overlaps it'll come down here and it comes over to here same on this other side so that's what's next and then just a matter of uh, uh, you know wiring up plugging in the wires and connecting the uh, coolant lines now we do have to install the radiator and the pump and that will be underneath this panel just like we do on most of our bug conversions well here's the uh, the setup that we took from our Carmen Ghia and then installed in the bug you can see the terminal strip we talked about when this was sitting loose so we took everything from from here and then take it over to the things that are attached to the vehicle itself so to remove this in the future we would just unscrew those eight connections right there disconnect your positive and negative coming from your battery pack and then the three uh, connections leaving the controller and going to the motor and then also our main uh, connector to the controller and then the two coolant lines and so that's basically all that would be necessary oh and, and disconnect your throttle and then that you know would allow this entire component board to be removed in one shot if you had to remove the motor for some reason you simply disconnect three connections uh, that go to the controller unplug your encoder wiring and um, remove the base plate here and then uh, you know four bolts and the motor comes out so it's a fairly modular setup allows you to do any upgrades any replacements uh, whatever in a simple fashion and that's what it's all about if you're going to do it do it so that you know down the road you've uh, you've kind of stacked the deck and made things easy for yourself but the bugs not going to be driven every day it's got this beautiful paint job just really a liability running down the freeway don't want anything to hit that front end and uh, chip the paint or anything so um, came out of the paint shop in January 2010 we've gone almost 10 years and he's in uh, just flawless condition you kind of want to keep it that way so our current daily driver until we decide on what our next marketing vehicle will be is this and this is a 2016 Volkswagen e-golf and it's a uh, it's another fun car to drive handles well it's very comfortable and of course it's a 2016 vehicle so it has all the modern conveniences and, and comfort features that you don't get in a 1974 vehicle of course and so uh, temporarily while we're um, figuring out what we are going to replace the Carmen Ghia with we will be driving this on the daily basis 
instead of uh, room for two as we've had in the past this is room for five and it's a uh, you know all electric efficient little vehicle to drive according to the EPA it has an 83 mile range But it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a comfortable car. Very roomy inside, uh, much more than you would think from looking at the outside of it. And has a very comfortable ride with heated seats and all the modern creature comforts that um, cars have today. But it's not a classic. And so that's kind of the business we're in is uh, we convert classic cars to all electric. And so we're currently looking for the next, uh, the next, uh, you know, um, marketing vehicle. Uh, the Carmen Ghia, we kind of used her for an extended period of time. We went, uh, like I said, over seven years. So we're looking for um, something new and different, something that's not VW. Um, but we just haven't come to, uh, we have a couple uh, vehicles in mind, but it's just a matter of being able to uh, you know, find one that uh, that's available and that is in the condition we want and that kind of thing. And so we will continue that search. And like I said, in the interim, we'll be driving the e-golf and on occasion, uh, Bob. He's a lot of fun to drive. We'll probably drive him more locally uh, to avoid running down the freeway every day. Um, but we've been doing that. He, he runs like a million dollars and he looks pretty good doing it. So until next time, thank you for watching. And hopefully we have a new uh, vehicle to reveal in the near future.